So you had a buy, you went back down to neutral, uh, and now you're back to buy. Talk us uh, through those steps, why you downgraded and why you're back up to buy. Mostly valuation calls both of these ways. Uh, look, this has been a rocket ship. It was a rocket ship in the first half of the year, got as high as $170 and then pulled back into 100 So that's a, an enormous amount of volatility, but you see that sometimes in this small mid-cap space. We've liked the story fundamentally for some time, and there's a great theme here, uh, and this is we're entering streaming wars. We all know that when we think about the Disney launch and the Apple launch and the Time Warner launch, Comcast launch, et cetera. There are a couple of derivative plays here. Now, I do like Netflix. The stock hasn't worked well, but I still like that stock. But here's an interesting play, Roku. They're going to get uh, advertising revenue as these new streaming platforms try to market themselves to consumers. If you sign up for one of these new streaming services via Roku, Roku will get a, um, a revenue share from that. And then finally, anything that leads to the kind of diversification and content kind of away from the big three, uh, Amazon, YouTube, and Netflix is positive for a name like uh, Roku. So we like the story fundamentally. We had a big pullback. We upgrade. Mark, talk us through the valuation, uh, particularly compared to Netflix, which uh, clearly has pulled back of late because of valuation fears. Yeah, well, Netflix has pulled back in part because of the streaming wars. Like, it's the negative derivative, the negative play off of streaming wars. It's this new competition that people are, that has caused people to be very nervous about uh, uh, Netflix. Also, Netflix missed sub numbers. So those are two great reasons for the stock to trade off. We think that's created a compelling buying opportunity, but I understand why it's traded off. Roku is a different matter. We haven't had any uh, misses here. We actually think numbers are reasonably set. We think there's probably modest upside. But we think this as, um, again, this is one of the best derivatives you can get off of the, you want to be the Switzerland during the uh, streaming wars. They are, they are Switzerland and the wars are occurring around them. They should be paid by a lot of these arms dealers. If I got that, if I didn't ruin the analogy, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> I think we understood what you were saying with the Switzerland. Lindsay, what do you make of Roku here? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a valuation call. I mean, they have some great things going for them, like, like Mark said, they're the Switzerland, right? This is where you want to be when you are in the streaming wars. And look, they're taking share. The revenue is growing hand over fist. It's, it's, it's an amazing company, I think. Mark, uh, I know everyone mentions, and you've alluded to it, that they are kind of agnostic as to which of these other content uh, providers is most successful. But they also have the Roku channel, which is an increasing revenue stream for them. Is that a sort of thing which you don't want to see be too successful and, and grow too strongly? Because then some of the uh, rivals might start to think, well, we, we don't want to have our, our apps and our content available on Roku's platform anymore. Uh, yeah, I guess I hadn't thought about it that way, Wilfred. But yeah, I can see that kind of nuanced risk. Uh, you reminded me, though, there's one other new element to the, the story, which is Roku has been an entirely North American, I think entirely U.S. phenomenon uh, to date. They've now announced that they're going to be launching into Europe. So I don't see any particular reason why they can't be successful both as a device vendor, uh, those Roku devices as an operating system vendor into uh, smart TVs in Europe and then in the rest of the world, but also as a streaming platform. So there's a kind of a new market play here that should help numbers, not any not anytime soon, not Q3 or Q4, but next year. But yes, in terms of uh, the Roku channel to date, that's been uh, um, and nothing but goodness for the story because that revenue, there's no revenue share, there's no ad revenue share that they have to um, uh, give off of that. So it's been uh, a real nice tailwind to the story. I see your point. But I don't think that's going to be a real concern until that, unless that were something like 50% of all the streaming via Roku. And I don't think that would happen.